is absolutely gorgeous, this place. And there's no other place like it that I'm aware of. You must have the best job. Yeah, it's pretty special. It's more of a lifestyle than a job. You know, where else would you want to be? We're down at Wilson's Promontory, a huge national and marine park on the southernmost tip of mainland Australia. Dave Johnson runs boat tours around this wild coastline and out to the untouched islands. This is a beautiful, pristine, fragile, untouched area and a marine national park around here as well, you know, which attracts people from all over the world. They don't want to come here to see wind turbines, they want to come in and see the natural beauty you know, in all its glory. So it'd just be a total disaster, I think, just to have them so close to Wilson's Promontory. Today, we're announcing that I am officially declaring Gippsland as Australia's first offshore wind zone. Within the next decade, hundreds of giant turbines will jut out of the sea to the east and south of here, generating huge amounts of renewable energy. The grid is strong, the skills are here, and the opportunities are enormous. The water here off the prom is being actively considered as another wind farm site, but the government's delayed making any immediate decision because there are strong community objections. You can't do it at the expense of the environment itself. You can't destroy the environment to save the environment. We are 100% committed to developing an Australian offshore wind industry, but we're going to take communities with us as we do so. Will every issue be non-controversial or unanimous? Of course not. We're about five kilometres offshore here, and it's here that you really get the best sense of perspective of just what these turbines are going to be like. So this massive rock behind me here is only about a third of the size of one of these turbines. The government's declared three areas here as offshore wind zones, starting 10 kilometres from the coast. And there are another five parts of the Australian coastline earmarked for development. Zoning an area means a company can apply to explore the coastal waters with a view to installing a wind farm. We need to rapidly decarbonise now. There isn't a moment to lose when we have such an ambitious renewable energy target. It's very clear that offshore wind is going to play a big part in the global energy mix because not only can it generate a lot of electricity and it can be a great base load power source, but it provides and stimulates so many jobs and is great for economies. Yeah, this is the farm game, isn't it? Yeah. In this total farm, which is not just this space here, it goes on the other side as well, there's about 50 turbines. Um, if we compare that to the coast, we're planning on hundreds and hundreds of turbines along the entire coast. So as far as the eye can see, you'll see turbines. The fact is, given that the amount of space we have here, this can still come out much yeah. further. Laura Jennings helped start the local Responsible Renewables Group. They're pro-renewables, but they want the turbines built further out to sea. I think we have to have a national conversation that says where are we prepared to put renewable energy? Are we prepared to put it around Uluru? Are we prepared to put it around the Great Barrier Reef, Ningaloo? What becomes important and sacred to us as a nation? At Port Welshpool to the east of Wilson's Prom, Star of the South will likely be Australia's first operational offshore wind farm. In the case of Star of the South, we've thought deeply about this issue. We've moved the wind farm site further away from Wilson's Promontory. We've thought about the size of the uh, various communities where there is a visual impact. If you're talking about from sort of the sea level to the top of the tip, as the blades rotate, you're talking about 350 metres tall. To give you a sense of scale, this island is also 350 metres tall, and it's the same distance offshore as the wind turbines will be. I mean, th th 
we talk about uh, visual amenity and people have different views about what constitutes uh, a, a benefit in terms of visual amenity and what may not be uh, a benefit in terms of visual amenity. Do you think anyone would see large turbines off a national park as a, as a visual amenity benefit? Well, I mean, the, the issue of the, it does not impact the national park. You'd be able to very clearly see them from the prom. Well, um, th th that's what uh, some people will say. Oh, no, 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 that's not, I'm not. And, and at the end of the day... It's not an opinion. No, no. It is fact that you will be able to see them well, from the prom. Well, with some of them, you, with some you may, indeed, with some proposals. What I would say is no technology that is needed to replace coal-fired generation is invisible. We will be seeing these technologies. The Star of the South's been given major project status. The turbines will still be visible from the National Park, but they're not in the most sensitive waters. Why not build them just that little bit further out where the visual impact isn't so great? So the first thing is, the further out you go, the deeper the water is, and you can increase the, the cost materially. Turbines in deeper water use new floating technology. High Wind in Scotland is one of only four floating wind farms around the world. Over there, wind farm developers are legally bound to consider the natural beauty of the environment. High Wind is 25 kilometres from shore. Wilson's Promontory National Park, there'll be more consultation this year about whether to allow wind turbines in these waters. Currently, I'm not satisfied that that part of the area should be declared. If their concerns can be dealt with, if they can be taken on board and those issues can be worked through, then fine, but that's not yet the case. But it's not that simple because the Victorian Labor government is already invested in this site. It's given $16 million to Macquarie to do feasibility work here on a project called Great Southern. That project can't go ahead until the federal government greenlights this zone. Most of my life was in Latrobe Valley, in the coal mines, power stations. Everyone was made redundant, so that was my turning point. I think I'm going to do something I really enjoy and I've got a passion about. The way of the world, we've got to go to green energy, of course, and, and you know, find better ways. But you know, it's got to be done in, in, a, in a, a sustainable and you know, eco-friendly way as well. You know, you've got to have a fine balance between the two. 